Hello friends! In today's video, I step out and go supplies shopping at Windy Point Soap Supplies in search for an ingredient that always seems to be sold out. I also grab some new candle supplies for a future project and then head down to my studio to press some mermaid tail bath bombs. All of that and more in the day in the life of a soap business owner. Good morning guys. I slept in. Oh well, this is reality and I'm awake now. So let's get the day going. Let's go from this and there you go. It's just that quick. So hello. <laughs> Today is an interesting day. I have a few things planned. I have to make some bath bombs. I have to go to Windy Point and pick up some things for my newest product that I'm launching in February. But pretty much today is a day in the life of a soap business owner. It's Saturday, but that involves working. If you want to see what that's like, just keep watching to feel inspired or maybe discouraged because you love your weekends and don't want to work during them. Gibson, say hi to the, the vlog. Everybody, this is my dog Gibson. And over here is my other dog, Dempsey, who is a basset hound. Hi. Hi. Sometimes it's just a dog pile in here. The first thing I like to do is check emails. I have a Patreon. So my patrons are my number one priority. I like to answer as many people as I can first thing in the morning so that I'm able to get back to my bubble BFFs within 24 hours. And then I answer all the emails about my business. There could be customer emails coming in. There could be wholesale inquiries. I basically like to clear my inbox every morning. I hate seeing that number in the hundreds, which it usually is when I open my email box. And now that that's done, let's get some coffee. Cheers. Kale got me this mug for Christmas. Let's go grab stuff at Windy Point. Before we head to Windy Point, Kale and I had to grab some groceries at the superstore. That's one of the things I've been loving about living in Calgary, the convenience. Grocery stores are everywhere. Lately, Kale and I have been very into mushrooms. We usually don't have a dinner planned even to use these guys. We just like having them in our fridge to add to stuff or to toss in some butter for a side. Oh, it's like a candle dye. Let's get, let's start with a small amount. Let's get this guy. Small. Yeah. Let's get purple, and I want to try magenta. Ooh. Like eight drops. Yeah, yeah, this is eight drops. Oh, and violet. Let's get violet too. Eight drops of wool color, 454 grams. That sounds great. Let's try that. So oh, you want purple and violet, or purple or violet? Um, let's start with purple, actually, and then let's get magenta too. too. Yeah, I think that oh, too. yeah. And then there's this solid candle dye, which I also want to try. Let's get a purple and a pink, if possible. Looks like there's a color chart here. Mm -hmm. There's like one that's oh, like yeah. a couple one. too. And then do you see any, I think it said raspberry dye. You want raspberry or like magenta like we got? Oh, here, rosemary, raspberry. Let's get this guy. Yes, let's get that. When I lived in Ontario, I used to have things shipped from Windy Point to where I lived. It's been kind of surreal to be so close to them and actually shop in their store. I lived kind of close to New Directions Aromatics in Mississauga, but it was still two hours drive away and they didn't have a storefront. You could shop like Windy Point does. Again, so convenient. This video isn't sponsored in any way by Windy Point. I just really love the variety of ingredients they offer. Seriously, everything you need to start making soap and lotion is at Windy Point Soap Supplies. However, 
They have been out of stock in a lot of things lately like castor oil and niacinamide, which I also really needed as I'm completely out. They were out of stock on it that day, unfortunately. I remember how long it took for them to restock it last time, so it'll probably be a while. But for now, we grabbed some more castor oil and some new candle supplies and headed home with our haul. So it's a bit of a healthier grocery haul than usual. We did get two types of mushrooms, cremony and portobello, broccoli and cauliflower, Chinese broccoli, mandarins, and a lemon. We also got some chips. Smart food popcorn is my favorite snack ever. It's so good. And these are Kale's Lay's chips that he likes to eat. The main reason why Kale and I needed to go to Wendy Point was to grab some more niacinamide. I had run completely out by making my borage cream. So we need more for my face cream and my serums. We go there, it's not there, they're sold out, which is so sad. But we did manage to pick up other things that we needed. I picked up some candle dye and I got two different kinds. One is a solid one. It's like a little, they come in these blocks and I got the liquid version as well. And the reason why I got both is because I've never done it before and I wanted to see what the differences were. If you have any tips about using either or, please leave them in a comment below because not only will I benefit from it, but other people watching this video are probably gonna benefit from that too. We also wanted to check on the availability of some ingredients that have been sold out for a while, like the big four liter size of castor oil that's been sold out for a long time and glycerin. Both were still sold out, but they did have the one liter version of castor oil. So I grabbed that because who knows, maybe this will be sold out too. And I overheard the workers at Winnie Point talking about how they were sold out of a lot of stuff. So even though in the footage, it looks like there's a ton of stuff at Winnie Point, which there is, things like castor oil and niacinamide are all sold out. And I wonder if that's a supply chain issue. And the reason why I picked up candle dye is because I'm making a new candle that I'm hoping to color. I haven't colored candles before. And that product is gonna go into the doll box that I'm releasing in a couple weeks now. So stay tuned for that video. It's late in the afternoon and the groceries have been put away. Kayla and I are now gonna go on our afternoon walk. <laughs> Knock this over. <laughs> We're gonna take a walk. Did you see the park over there? Yep, we'll be yeah. parking that way. Yeah, come along with us. Kale had just gotten back from a run where he takes Gibson, so we didn't take him on this walk, and Dempsey gets her walk later on in the day. So this was just Kale and I, and we decided to walk around our neighborhood. The ground was so slick and covered in ice. Kale and I have grippers attached to our boots to keep us from slipping and we really needed them that day. I've been trying to get in a two kilometer walk daily as I'm pretty sedentary and I've been pretty good. I like to take them in the afternoon right before I work in the studio. And today I had to make mermaid tail bath bombs, which I love to do. They're one of my favorite bath bombs to make. So when I got home, I headed right to the studio to begin. Mermaids, the humans of the sea. Who doesn't like mermaids? I know I love mermaids. They were the inspiration for this mermaid tail bath bomb that I'm gonna be making. I added it to my line recently and they are selling really well. So it's staying on my line. This is gonna be a hand press bath bomb. I'm not gonna be using my bath bomb press today. And for that mold, I'm gonna be using this one from Fizz Fairy. Thank you, Fizz Fairy. This is one of my favorite molds because it produces one of the coolest looking bath bombs, I think, on my line. And the scent of it is gonna be ocean inspired and ocean scented. I'm gonna be using sea spray from Fizz Fairy as well. I'm also gonna be using Fizz Fairy's dyes. Everyone's favorite mermaid is obviously Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Let me know in the comments if you know any other mermaids and if they're your favorite. I used her beautiful green tail as an inspiration and to get that, I'm gonna be using emerald green dye and apple green dye and also aquamarine dye from Fizz Fairy. And last but not least, I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkle using a biodegradable glitter. This one called Release the Kraken, which I actually designed, is one of my favorites. Beautiful purple and green blend that I haven't seen anywhere else. Before we press, I'm going to check the humidity. Been pretty dry, yep. 
37. That's too dry. Let's turn this on, which I did, and hopefully that will make the air more moist and it'll be better for pressing bath bombs. When it comes to successful bath bombs, it's using a formula with just the right ratio of dry ingredients to wet ingredients. As the humidity fluctuates with the weather, then you'll have to make some adjustments like turning on either a humidifier or a dehumidifier, adding or subtracting water or oil. If you're having trouble with your bath bombs, it comes down to either or both of these two main things. It does take a a lot of batches to get familiar with what your bath bombs need in order to press successfully, which I know is frustrating, but once you get it, it starts to become easy. I must admit, since moving to Calgary, making bath bombs has become a lot easier. Something about the dry air makes bath bomb making pretty consistent. Back in Ontario, it was a constant adjustment with their humid summers and big thunderstorms that would roll by. That's one thing I don't miss about Ontario. So I just separated half of that batch and I left another half in this bowl. And this is gonna be my darker color. And we're gonna get that darker color by putting in a little bit of emerald and also a little bit of aquamarine dye from Fizz Fairy. The last time I made this, I just put emerald green dye in here and the color difference wasn't striking enough. That's why I'm adding aquamarine dye, which is a little blue. I'm interested to see what the final color is gonna look like. And we're gonna bring this back to the mixer. We have a slight color difference. It's a little darker than it was before, which is good. Maybe it'll get darker tomorrow. We shall see. So for the lighter green, I need to hydrate it. So I'm putting it back in my KitchenAid mixer and oh, I'm gonna spray it with some water and then I'll be ready to press. So here are my two colors. This mold is great because it has a slip at the bottom here where I can just rest one of the pieces. And for me, this piece, the one that rests at the bottom that sits on the lip is gonna be the front of the mermaid tail. And that's where I'm gonna put my glitter. And the glitter that I'm using is Unleash the Kraken. How Freaking beautiful is that. Purple and green, love that color combination. I just grab a little bit of that and I spread it on the fin part of the mermaid tail, just along the grooves there. And then I'm gonna fill the scales part with the lighter green. And then I'm gonna press into those scales so I can get that detail really crisp. And same with the bottom part where the, the tail is. Just press it right into there. And if you're using embeds, this is where I like to put mine, down here. And these are the little cubes because I ran out of the powder. I need to make more, but I'm just gonna be using the cubes for today. And then I keep filling it, but I'm not gonna press down at all. I'm just gonna keep it very loose. And I think that's the key with using these hand press molds is to not press them in too hard because I think pressing them in too hard just makes pressure on the bath bomb, causing them to crack. At least that's what I've experienced. So now that you have the bath bomb overflowing like this, we're going to put the last piece of the mold on top like that. And we're gonna be very light in pressing everything down. Like I mentioned, we don't wanna create any pressure that causes cracks, although cracks could still happen. And we're gonna press lightly on the other side as well. Now to get it out, I'm gonna push the mold with the bath bomb in it out of the sleeve. And I like to do this over the bowl that has the green stuff in it. And then I like to clean off the sides. And then I use a tray, I take a spoon, and I just lightly tap on both ends to get it out. And you shouldn't have to tap too hard with this mold. The bath mop comes out pretty easily if you're using my mix and my recipe. So this is the front where the glitter is. I'm not going to pull this piece off first. I'm gonna pull the piece off that has the plain side with no glitter. And that's what it looks like. And now we're gonna transfer this to the drying tray. So to get this bath bomb out, we're gonna flip this over on the plain side onto the tray, like this, <laughs> like that. And then we're gonna slowly tap this to get this loose. Never force it. And it feels loose there. I'm just gonna place it to where I want it to dry. And I'm just gonna simply lift this up. And there is your beautiful bath bomb. And because this was the bottom side, you can see the details are a lot more crisp and that glitter on the tails looks amazing. So I'm gonna keep pressing these guys and come back to you once everything is done. So here are all the finished mermaid tails and when they're all together like this in a group, they look so beautiful and so satisfying. You can see the different shades of green here a little bit better and I hope it will get a little bit darker as they dry. Who knows if they will. I've been loving these guys so much and I'm glad that my customers have been loving them too. But now that these are pressed, I'm going to clean up and head upstairs and have some dinner. Oh. 
Oh, this all looks so good. Thank you so much, you guys, for following me along on my day in the life of a soap business owner working on a Saturday. For those of you that live in Calgary, I know that a few of you have shopped at Windy Point. Let me know your Windy Point favorites down below in the comments. And if you want to make those mermaid tail bath bombs, the recipe for that is going to be on my Patreon. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons. All of you are so appreciated and so kind and so generous. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome, especially my bubble BFFs right here on Kill Shirt. <laughs> so that's it. We had a great day with you guys. And until the next one, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and keep making beautiful things. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs> you enjoying sitting there in my seat, Jigs? <laughs> I am you. <laughs>